I'm on, I'm on, I'm on outer space. I'm in solar. I don't, I don't, I don't feel no pain. I'm a soldier. I had hoes that flicking, now they give me head and shoulders. Eyes low, eyes low, eyes low, eyes low. Folks, we are absolutely positively back, and I know you guys are absolutely not tired of hearing us because you're listening to it right now. Thank and you for listening. We this whole 2019 consistency thing pretty pretty hard. Um, and I know we took like a month off. But I feel like within these last like three weeks, we legit made up for it. We don't talk about those things. Yeah, we we only talk about the future and, and stacking all types of Gouda. Ah, uh, the Gouda. I am Baron J six seven. I am T Jones, and we have Mr. Dominique Franklin, yes, content sir. marketing manager, and we are here as Adventures of the Black Nerds. I wish we had like a clap noise. Wouldn't that have been yeah. dope right like there? Like a soundboard. Yeah. Hey. I'm into the soundboard. I'm inspired now. I need a soundboard. Oh, my. That would have been great. You oh, with the my. soundboard is going to be ridiculous. Oh, bro, because I'm going to have nothing but like meme noises. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> I'm about to bust. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Last week, that bo- that that Frank uh, from uh, oh, uh, that King of the Hill man, he said, "Oh my God, I'm about to buzz. Oh, I'm gonna buzz." Boy, that had me rolling all week, all week. When I wanted to laugh, that's what I listened to. Oh, yeah. oh I'm about to buzz. <laughs> oh, it's so okay. classic. King of the Hill is life, man. Uh, damn it, Bobby. But, uh, oh. oh, bro. No. So, okay, folks. So, today, we're here to talk about the, the internets. I like saying that like old people. The, the internets. internets and the social medias and the and the Facebooks and the Twitters. Um, no, because I want to win out here. I'm tired of losing. I'm trying to get all these uh, sponsors. I'm trying to get Starbucks to, to throw me these free Starbucks Frappuccino chill coffee drinks. Only 180 calories per bottle. <laughs> How many times did you it's practice quite, that? It's quite delicious. No. <laughs> Refreshing. I can't I wait to sell it on you you've, all. You've been practicing that since we started this podcast. <laughs> Randomly, he just pulls something from the side. It could, bro, they could be competitors in this. Bro, I'll, I'll sport this Colgate Total Floss to go. <laughs> I, I will sell out so fast. This show will be nothing but ads, bro. I'll wear I'll wear an ads jersey like the WNBA. Of course. You think I'm playing? <laughs> Got bro, seven seven up across through. your shoulder right there. Bro, I'm telling <laughs> any space y'all see here, if y'all offer enough, it'll be there. I look, I'm not I don't I don't discriminate Pornhub, all them like everybody. <laughs> I I'll rock it, bro, for real. Yo, look. He I'm ain't not, lying. He, he ain't lying. I'm saying he like lying. funny. That's hilarious. Uh, but I do value myself and my pride, kind of. Let's get some sponsors up in here, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bro, yeah. so, 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 Dom, tell us, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about wh- who you are and what it is you do on the interwebs. Yeah, man, all up on the internets and the Facebooks and all that. Yeah, uh, so I'm Dominique Franklin, as previously stated, uh, content marketing manager at, at an agency right now. Uh, got started working in PR, public relations, and solely just started shifting towards social. Now I'm falling in love with um, content and heading back to school in like two weeks to um, get my MBA and maybe focus more on the on the business side and just go around talking to people, uh, which is kind of the the end goal. I mean, I know it doesn't, you know, it's probably just gonna sound like I don't wanna work, but I don't really, I don't wanna sit at an office anymore. I wanna go out, I wanna talk. I'm like, boom, 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 connection, connection, connection. You pay them, they pay you, bam, all right, I'm out. Like that's my that's 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 the goal. That's the end goal. Are you out here living my dreams? <laughs> nah, bro. No, for real. Because I'm gonna tell you, if I could get paid, my my ultimate goal when it comes to getting paid is either do a little bit, a lot of hard work, like shoveling elephant crap, <laughs> and if they paid me like ten grand a week, I would be out there catching it with my bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I catch it. Or I do like get a decent paid job, but I just don't do nothing. Like I, I could, I could live with either one of those. I'm a yeah. lazy person, folks. I'm very lazy. It's called efficiency. Uh, 
<laughs> there you go. Efficiency. Hey, I don't know if it was Bill Gates. Somebody made a quote out there, and they said it was so beautiful. It was like you give the hardest job to the laziest person, and they'll find the most efficient way to do it. Heck yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. Boy. That is me all day. <laughs> Man, I take pride I'm... in that. As a guy at work, or you know, the saying "work smarter, not not harder." Yeah. Man, I've been given so many ample examples of how not how to work smarter, not harder. Man, I don't play. I cut corners. I do, man. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no bro. Yeah. Hey, just, for real, it's all about efficiency. Mm-hmm. We don't have time. We only got 24 hours. Exactly. I just, I literally, like, example for you right now, before, you know, as I'm prepping to get ready to hop in on your, your guys' podcast, my boss hits me with an email saying he wants to basically switch up our entire social strategy. I'm like, bro, like things are running smooth, it's mm-hmm. built out, like we got a system. Now you just want to why why are we making this harder? Like yeah. you wanna shout out to my boss though. Thank you for I'm blessed, man. You. <laughs> you gotta get that shout out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now well, you know what? In that okay, so you getting into this this field, this specific mm-hmm. field, mm-hmm. was it did you feel or Getting into it, did you feel like it was forced? Like, this is the way of the world now, so I have to do this? No. Oh, what was the second part? Or was it just, you just seen it, Mm -hmm. grew up in dealing with computers, dealing with, uh, you know, social media. I'm not sure how heavy you are on social media media platforms, but normally I see a lot of people who, or when I talk to people who are in it, it's they've... They, it, this was the way it was going. So it was like, I got to do this now. So what right. pretty much what made you say, all right, cool. This is it. Let me do this. Right. There's a lot of different ways that I can answer this. I'm going to start off with the first part. Cause I think it's the, or the last part of your question. I think it's more relevant. Like Baron knows he's on my Facebook. I maybe pop up every now and then post. And the truth is that for work, I'm on social all the time. So like for me personally, like I don't want to post that much. I don't. You know, I'll post if it's important. I see y'all's podcast, uh, you pop up. You know, I'm going to show the family some love, so I'm going to share that. But, like, other than that, I'm, like, I'm sitting here back. I'm ghosting it, basically. Mm-hmm. But, basically, how I got into this, man, it, it's crazy. Like, and it's truly, like, just, just God directing. Because Baron may remember this from high school. In high school, man, I was, yo, me and my grades, man, <laughs> constantly in trouble, man. I probably graduated with, like, a 2 point one two something like that you barely made it about it <laughs> right uh went to the rcc thing didn't know what i wanted to do and then uh, i started writing for the newspaper and from there everything just clicked just boom 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 got my grades better transferred found pr um and then coming out of pr i kind of realized i don't i don't want to talk to reporters like i don't want to be writing press releases i'm very uh roi return on investment driven mm-hmm. so working in social, I can immediately see the numbers. I can see what's working. I can see what's not. And I can, I can make changes on the fly okay. versus PR like public relations folks. There we go. Yeah. Versus PR is more like, okay, we sit back, we kind of wait and see like how this goes. I'm like, nah, man, I need to know, like, are we effing up right now? Are we effing mm-hmm. up tomorrow? When are we effing up or when are we doing great? Right. Yes. Um, and then I kind of just fell deeper and deeper into it, man. Started doing more design work, video editing, and just, it just it just keeps going um because they all tie they, in the one yeah it's all the same it's all the same but as far as like me and my personal brand it's actually something i struggle with and a lot of marketers do because we spend so much time marketing other people or marketing businesses or whatever it's like when it comes down to me it's like i don't know what the hell to talk about like what do y'all what do y'all want to hear from me <laughs> yeah that makes sense it really does because you can you can show me something, give me all the facts and details on it, and I can big it up. But it's mm-hmm. like most people who aren't, you know, narcissistic or, you know, all about themselves can't really sit and talk. Like, I can't sit and talk to you about myself. It's hard for me to, mm-hmm. you know, write a, put in, you know, the description of yourself in a resume. I can't mm-hmm. do that. My wife got to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Y'all want to hear about me? I'll talk. What y'all want to know? <laughs> it's kind of weird. No, no, I, no. Hey, no, no real talk. I do, I do know what you guys mean because <laughs> it's. I mean, let's flip it on a different note. Like I know with me and gaming, one of the biggest like consequences of getting into this and streaming and whatnot is gaming somehow became a type of a job for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
Travis to tell you, yeah. I, my Xbox, my PlayStation hasn't been turned on in weeks, probably almost a month, maybe more. And I have to take like hiatuses from my console gaming. Mm-hmm. And I go play weird games like I'll go play like Tetris, cell phone games, like just to completely escape it. Yeah. Because I have to it even though it's a passion of mine, but it's for me, I have this weird thing of whenever something gets tied to work, it 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 like no longer becomes you start fun. Throttling it that fun. line. I yeah. Feel. And it's a it's a weird thing. So I couldn't imagine social media being my job and then having all of a sudden build my own brand it's funny because we talk about how easy it is but it's not you know oh yeah you know just post this send me the link and i'll post it nah i I won't post it for lord knows how long (laughs) hey no okay let's talk about this and i keep interrupting you and i'm sorry no go for it look tell the people what you had to do to start seeing our podcast pop up Yo, I had to I had to go like first I went to like your page, Baron. I was like, boom, like I'm digging what my cousin's doing. I'm wanting to support it. So I like I had to like like a cool like ten or eleven posts for your stuff to start popping up freak more frequently. And then I realized like if I wanted to stick, you know, um, I'm gonna have to share, I'm gonna have to comment. I'm not just doing that, you know, just because 'cause I'm like No, you know, no, no, no. Yo, got- you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want like I wanna see this stuff, right? Um and then once you got your Facebook page, I was like, bam, now I gotta go back and do this again. And I think that's what everybody has to realize that like that algorithm is a mofo, man. Like if you, if there's somebody that, that you haven't reached out to or, or, uh, you know, you feel like someone disappeared off the face of the map, they still there. It's Facebook. Like they mm-hmm. stay right there. Things that you, you may have stopped engaging with their posts. So Facebook's like, Oh, you don't, you don't want to see this, this stuff no more. So we're going to go ahead and get this out of here. Confirm. I legit. Yeah, confirmed. This it's I, confirmed. It, it, There's an algorithm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. No, because I know for me, if you go on my Facebook page, it's legit probably 15, 20 people, if mm-hmm. that, that constantly pop up. Yeah. And it's uh, the same thing with me. Same thing with me. And it's it's what's wild is what really taught me how bad it was was dealing with that situation with you trying to find our post. And then mm-hmm. also, um, because we have a lot of the same friends in the same circle. I'll uh, they'll share a video and then I'll share it and people we're both friends with will only like it on my po- my share right it's not their share but yeah. I'm like we're all we're all friends so that mm-hmm. just means I'm connected to people that are running through my timeline mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. it's it's nuts yeah. it's and crazy. so my first my next question is what way can we and you recommend uh, boosting your visibility on Facebook. I want to hit the major ones. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. So Facebook, what is the best way to boost visibility and get in touch with more people? Are you, are you talking about on a on a business page or on a personal? Because 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 mm. you would more so, to be different. Let's talk about the personal? business page. Business yeah. The reason, yeah. reason being is because you know with the with the personal page, I'm pr- like let's use me as an example with my personal page. I'll go through anything. It's it's not really governed under a standard. There's a lot like right. I, I'm gonna avoid this type of content. I'll watch right. and look at and read anything. But on mm-hmm. like a business yeah, page, good. you know, you'll have probably fans. I mean, depending mm-hmm. on what type of businesses, fans or people that follow. So let's let's do the business page first. Yeah, first, I'm gonna say I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys. I, it's not like I was testing you, but I am glad you guys went with business because so many times I try to tell people, my friends clients potential clients that you you cannot be personal you on your business page like there's going to be like it's still you so your brand is going to mesh with who you are and i have seen this on you guys page like some of the things that baron may post on hit on on his personal i'm not seeing pop up on baron j67 which is a good thing like it should you know <laughs> but <laughs> separate <laughs> you have to and that separation is important it's important it's people votes <laughs> but um so unfortunately though the answer nobody likes facebook is a is a is a pay to play space now like you have to you have to boost your posts if you really want to get some interaction mm. and but it's not like you got to throw like like people we, you know i say that people be thinking damn i gotta throw two hundred dollars at this one post nah, throw five dollars behind there for three days see what happens it works well throw ten dollars at it see what happens keep up and it uh well, don't up it up too far, you know, don't start paying rent on it and stuff, but, yeah. you know, throw some money behind it, see what happens. If that, if it, if the results don't come out the way you want it, maybe it was the copy, maybe it was your content. Maybe that's just something that belonged on like 
Instagram instead of Facebook. And then you just mm-hmm. go to Instagram and try boosting it there. But it definitely is, a, unfortunately, a pay-to-play space right now. It's funny that you say that because I, um, when I set up my Baron J67 gaming account, mm-hmm. uh, gaming profile, the first thing I did was took like five, ten bucks, and I ran an ad. Now, I knew USA ads co- uh, clicks cost a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. So I went to like the Middle East, India, <laughs> different parts of Africa, different countries in Africa. Um, I think I went to like Italy. So you'll randomly see people speaking. In di- and then you, what's dope, what I saw is you got to pick like English speaking people from all oh. over. Like, yeah, I was able to like break down because I, I mean, I would love anybody and everybody in there. But if I can't communicate with you, and they, right. but they, and they act, and the statistics they give you is actually broken down for that, though, right? Yeah, it break from what I remember seeing. It broke that all the way down. Yeah. But it's funny. Here it is. I'm paying five dollars to get three hundred plus clicks when that mm-hmm. same five dollars in the U.S. would only got me like twenty to thirty mm-hmm. estimated. Right. You know, like it gets it. It really does depend on regions. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's much more competitive. And usually, like what you're doing, especially for what you're doing, you know, you bo- if you're gonna boost the stream, like that's so worldwide right now. Like that's definitely spend the money where best it is, because that something like that you don't have to boost in the U.S. If you can get better results somewhere else, mm-hmm. why not? There's there's gamers all over the world. Exactly. Mm-hmm. People blowing people, up is blowing up. People fail mm-hmm. to realize that. Yo, I'm trying to get into esports, man. I'm trying to see, yo, y'all need some marketing. Like, that's Ooh. just it was blowing Ooh. up, man. <laughs> okay, so you you like the space of East, or when you say get into it, you want to get into the marketing side of it? Yeah, the marketing oh, okay. the, the All side right. of things. Yeah, yeah. see, because esports is like, I can go on and on about esports. I mean, I, I started following esports back in Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare 2. And uh, it, was, it, was j- it was so fascinating, like how this was, this is competitive Call of Duty. You know, I even mm-hmm. tried it. Video and, games. Man, it was video games for me. So when you started seeing like all these other games that are out, uh, how big the space have got, I'm talking about they just had a uh, the Call of Duty World Championships last weekend. Dang. And that first place won, obviously they don't get all of it, but first place won $800,000 of a team of five with one coach. So that's six. So Yo. it's just... The marketing behind that is it, it, and obviously me looking at it, it looks so, like ah, you know, it just it doesn't look like hard. It doesn't yeah. look out of. It's the same the same things we see over and over again. So mm-hmm. with esports, with marketing with esports, is that an easier field to? Would, would it be an easier field to get into the market, or is it kind of, you know, no, you're man. just testing the water with it? I, I think that uh, because it, it's the number, it's, so it's the number one like growing sport in the world right now. Like it's outpacing everything as far as you know, and then it, it's so big time. But I think it'd actually be, it actually be really hard not just to get into it, but the marketing behind everything is probably really hard too because they are growing so fast and they are growing so quickly and gaining so much popularity. Not only do they want to sustain it, but like their bosses, everybody bosses are looking for how do we how do we take this and go to the next level and the next level and the next level like it's it's so new and so fresh that not only do i and like a bunch of other marketers have interest in it but also um on the business end of things they want to make sure that this isn't just a you know a one-time deal like mm-hmm. they want this to, to grow they want this to be the sports of the future you know yeah um and as far as what's hard behind it is again it's because it's so it's so new and fresh and it, it, which is exciting to me someone in marketing having being able to come in and kind of i'm talking a lot right now but you got me excited and and build it up from the foundation and and, and be able to look down the road 10 15 20 years and be like yo like i started that when like a handful of people knew about esports now you know look where we're at Man. but it's a lot of hard looking at the data looking at you know trying to come up with campaigns um everything that goes into marketing i mean i couldn't imagine what they're going through right now so maybe five years i'll wait you know to settles down a little bit and Man, then I'm try to jump in i'm gonna tell you one thing it's just with especially with esports since i follow it so heavy i'm talking about when i say i follow it i mean 
I have favorite teams. I have favorite players. Yeah. I try oh, to dang. do it. It um, you know, I can. It, it's a lot of teams out there. The issue mm-hmm. was a lot of people didn't have faith in it, like some of the people that I watch, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, as at, the way they kind of did it, and I'll just give you the the short version of it was content first, esports second, mm-hmm. and this and content to them was YouTube videos. YouTube videos, streaming, whether it was on Twitch or MLG TV at the time or whatever. So it was just content first, fan base through your content, and then, you know, you brought in the esports side of it. And it transitioned so well. I can, after, you know, after we shoot, I'll give you some examples. But um, it was so so crazy to watch it. And I'm talking about seeing people average 10K of, a video and that being a lot at the time to now people averaging 600k a video you know making That's millions wild. it's just ridiculous and then how spot and then how sponsorships work with esports is it was mind-blowing to me i thought it was hard i thought it was right. extremely like difficult to get in the field but it literally if you just follow that basic content first esports second it becomes mm-hmm. a different like it opens it up to a different world of you know information out there so i don't know i with like with esports i i'm fully 100 percent locked in i love it i watch it i you know you couldn't tell me it's the wrong thing to do it's just when you even hey you know you know who um what uh who echo fox is right the team Mm-mm. They're owned okay. by Rick Fox. Yeah, they're owned by Rick oh, Fox. They're going through a situation oh, now. Yeah, yeah. So I won't go through too much with that, but they're going through a situation right now. And um they they go they they have obviously their players, but they're not heavy into content. So you'll mm. be surprised of how many people don't really know them. They don't market, their guys don't stream. Some of them are household names because of, you know, crazy Previous, things that they've yeah. done. Yeah. For example, um, was the fighter guy the FGC fighter Sonic Fox? Sonic Fox. Yeah, he is. But that's because he's the world's best fighter. Exactly. Video game fighter. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just if you compare a lot of these teams to some of these teams that actually go out there and look for sponsorship, actually do the the marketing that needs to be done. I'm talking about basic videos or basic content where they'll do like trivia. They do right. trivia or. 1v1s these are simple things to do but they just right. it just feels different cuz this team is doing it so right. ah and, man Go and ahead. speaking on and speaking on that dom like honestly man i personally feel you should jump into it now yes because yeah. the one thing about it is you can write your own ticket any way possible mm-hmm. um things that things that seem stupid are great like i always use the example of me because that's for one what i know people watched me play an old pc game that never made the top 100 games reviewed on twitch Mm -hmm. i hit affiliate status through that i got a big fan but it was so bad and i didn't realize how much i was playing the game because when i've changed games people my my viewership fell off i lost all my and i didn't realize it was because i was playing one game but this game is years old Graphics look like crap, but the <laughs> gameplay is great. Like it's, mm. it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, and my youngest just walked in. Hey, hi. hi. <laughs> love you. I love you. Um, no, but I really, I've learned that you can really write your own lane. And one thing I'm not seeing a lot of, and I think it's just because of, uh, I don't know if it's accessibility or just the the thought that maybe nobody said you could do it. Um, I'm not seeing a big urban uh, scene. Like, I see a lot of urban content creators. I mm-hmm. see a lot of black content creators, Latino content creators, uh, Asian. Like, I see a lot, a lot of it, but everybody seems so spread out. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like if you can create hubs or even um, just that one space that people go to to dump the information in so everybody else can look at it. Right. Oh, like that's something that could really take off. Um, because I'm noticing a lot of blurred groups, a lot of hell, they're even doing a bunch of blurred cons. Mm-hmm. Chicago, Louisiana, mm-hmm. 
um, where else did they just do one? Atlanta, like they have, and like all the funny content YouTube, uh, Instagram creators and comedians, all yeah, black over there, like Long Beach Griffey and uh, RDC World, D- all D- of D- what's his name, D, D- Storm, R- yeah, all of them, yeah, They're all you know, they all started. It, it's it's like a whole world is blooming up. Like I didn't know there were so many damn black cosplayers. Like <laughs> I had no idea. Um, and that's just ignorance on me. And that's, but then again, we live in Southern California, mm-hmm. right? It's a melting pot. So I go to a convention and I see one black dude dressed up like Kakashi, and I'm like, oh, that's dope. Not realizing there's probably a million dudes, black dudes, who dress up like Kakashi. Yeah. But uh, it, it just, I feel like if you have that inkling to jump in, do it now. We'll see. And that, and, and what you, what you guys just did, that's, that's my, I would say that's my, my. Um, my only hesitate. No, I wouldn't. I, I, I shouldn't cause that hesitation. But uh, trying to think about it, you know, right? Especially as I'm trying to look for a career that fits me and suits me and blah blah and all that jazz. You know, you guys talk so passionately, knew all these different things, and I'm like, I have to. If I'm going to do this, I have to take some time to like immerse myself into it, other than just playing games occasionally on my computer. I have to go to to some conventions. I have to really get to know some streamers, things of that nature, because my job, both in communications and marketing is to know I have to know the business like right now I mean at esports the thought right now my dream will be like the automotive industry um, I know I love cars I mean I can name I can look at a car and name it um, and right now I have the opportunity with my current job to kind of dabble in it but um but unfortunately the automotive industry is going to be slowing down in the next 10 15 years so may not be the right one to jump into but um, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that that is really my only hesitation. Like, if I'm gonna do this, I have to like go outside of my interest of just playing the game and dive into the culture of, mm-hmm. of everything and get to know it all. Or you know what? I'm gonna drop this one on you because one thing I've no I've I've been learning is if something is either dying down or not as big as it used to be niche that shit down mm-hmm. so yeah. what i would recommend to you because i don't know what you're into whether it's muscle cars sports cars cars um, in general cars, man cars in general i'll, I'll, I'll look, look at a review of a minivan future. that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's dope that is see i love people folks when you have i give this talk every time we interview somebody it is amazing when you can have a passion about something please 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 that one thing that gets you going that one thing that wakes you up that one thing that you will sit at the dinner table and talk to anybody from Satan to Jesus about that's the thing you need to be working on. Yeah. That's the field you need to work in. That's the, the job you need to pursue. That's the, if that one thing you can hold that conversation about and you light up and you, you feel light and you feel happy talking about it and your motor gets running. That's, that's that passion, that creator creative passion that was put in your heart. That's for you to pursue. So folks, our, our soapbox, I try to say it as much as possible because just do it. Life's way too short to be talking about what if. But back to you. <laughs> I really think that I would start looking into and get ahead of the curve in the uh, and start trying to mainstream, uh, hy- not hybrid, but uh, eco-friendly sports cars. Mm. And muscle. That is the next big thing. Because they're never going to go away. People no. are gonna like the muscle, the big body. People are gonna want fast cars. Mm-hmm. I, you know how many Priuses run past me on the freeway? I was like, yeah, "What am I buying for?" <laughs> right. Like, I get so mad. I get so mad. I was like, "What did you buy the Prius for? If you're gonna be out here running the RPMs high as hell, like, really? not all, maximizing all, all your MPGs? <laughs> yeah, you out here running it like you should have just got a Honda." Yeah, that thing. Tell <laughs> I drove my I drove my roommate's uh, Prius, and when I was not driving eco friendly, yo, that thing let me know. Like basically, you, you out here driving like a crazy man. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's, it's funny. I brought my car to the shop and it has eco mode on it, and they turned it off, and I forgot all about it. And yes, it'll let you know. Hey, you are doing too much? You need <laughs> yeah. to s- slow it down. Stop, <laughs> man. You out here running higher than you need to? You wasting gas? Mm-hmm. Like no, and. But but at the same time, even though I know with the whole pushing for a more greener situation, with um, even with automation, mm-hmm. people still like to go fast. You're never yeah. gonna stop that. That's never gonna like. Yeah. I don't think that'll yeah, ever change. go away. 
people are gonna want a faster way of getting fast travel. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm telling you, man. like I go to sleep. Oh, that car gets you. Could you imagine? Look, these are the conversations that our picture is having. You know, if everything goes well and the Earth don't end, fifty years from now, <laughs> sixty years from now, we're gonna have conversations like, oh. Oh, my car, when I go to sleep, it gets me to my destination in five minutes. <laughs> oh, no, right. like, I picture, like, <laughs> legit, like, oh, my car's auto price gets us, uh, it swerves past three cars per mile versus <laughs> yours, which only two. Like, no. That's going to be the car. So what did you do yesterday? Oh, play cards in the car, as you know, we yeah. went to Disneyland. You know, yeah, <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, I, I can totally picture that if everything goes as it's supposed to. In 60 years, I, I really do. Hmm, but right. that's if things go right. Because, you know, think, yeah. But, uh, have <laughs> uh, but no, like, really. So, what's your dream car? I gotta ask. My dream car right now would be a Ferrari 458 Italian. Mm. If yeah. I can get that tomorrow. Not even the Ferrari La Ferrari. Like, that thing is, I don't know if you guys seen that. That thing, it looks crazy. I mean, that's just a track car. Like, you said it, Ferrari, a, what? La Fer- Ferrari. La Ferrari. It's like La Ferrari. La, that thing looks wild, man. At least in a 458, I tell you, you know, I could pretend to go to Stay the Brothers, grab me a couple groceries, and go looks on home. Looks normal. I yeah, got to. See, I got to see what that car look. Oh, that La Ferrari. You ain't taking that. No, you. That is straight track. You take that to the track. You take that thing home. That's it. Mm. Man, but it's a mo- I think it's a mo- But yeah, that'd be my dream car. 458 Italia. That's crazy. You know what's funny? I, I'm not really a car guy, but I respect a solid car. Like mm-hmm. I get it, I get the love and the passion behind it. But if I had to pick a car that I could get right now for some random reason, I want an El Camino. That's mine. Yo, <laughs> I want an El Camino. Bro. That's mine. I put a small block. I put a small block in it. Um, I wouldn't even like. I wouldn't even aluminum trim it out or nothing. Man. I would just go get a solid like black paint job. That's with some sweet. stock, black, some stock black. Uh, yeah. man. bro. I just want a nice little El Camino because you know then it's like it's long gas. Mm-hmm. It's not a truck, but mm-hmm. I can like haul something if I need it to. You can put something I ain't in the back. Helping people move. Like, that was, that's not my goal. I want an El Camino with a bench seat. That's it's with just the bench seat. Ooh. Only way to have it. <laughs> man, oh. I was I was just talking to my girl about this because uh my other if I can get a seventy two Challenger that would be dope. And I was just mm. saying like. A couple of classics went by us, and I was like, it was just something about like cars back then had like they had culture, they had life, like they look different. Like, yeah. you don't if you're a Mustang fan, you don't go and buy a Challenger. You get a Mustang like, because they it's totally yeah. different cars. Yeah. So, okay, so Tom, I gotta ask this question. Oh, mm-hmm. what was up with the '90s run of the Mustang? Yo, <laughs> the ugliest cars <laughs> on God's green earth. It was like an IROC. Hooked up with a with a freaking DeLorean and gave birth to a Mustang. That those things were so okay. And I speak on Mustangs because when they brought back that 2008, look, I act like I don't know cars. When you they sound like you know cars, right? When they brought back that 2008 Shelby, the mm-hmm. the Shelby GTS. Oh, those were the prettiest. Set the world ever. on fire, man. Bro, I wanted one. <laughs> yeah. Like, until I got in the car, I got in one. Because I'm so used to driving Hondas and little four cylinders and, you know, little putt putts. I mm. put my foot on the gas in that bad boy. Bro, I, was, I got out of the car. I parked it and got out. I was like, <laughs> it's know? too much for me. That's too much for me. I, I legit, hand to God, I parked it and got out the car. Like, right. come in the car. Like He's no. a monster. <laughs> yeah, the beast. I was like, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, right. Like, but this is something you got to grow up driving. Like, honestly, you got to you have to be you very very used to like just going fast. Not not just every now and then you want to put your foot down. No, like all constant. the time. This is this is what I do. Hmm. <laughs> Although I'm not gonna like, right now. I drive a, a, a right now. I drive a Jeep Compass. You know, it's cool. It gets me from A to B. You know, yeah. But. But when I get home and I take my mom's infinity out, yo, I, I throw that thing in sport mode. <laughs> it it every oh, time. <laughs> every time. Oh. And she knows it too. She hey, said, you ain't I ain't yeah. coming back with gas. <laughs> yeah. well, I remember I remember one of my exes, she had a um some type of Mercedes. I don't even know what the hell it was. I don't know why she let me drive it either. But <laughs> I wasn't old enough to get into the places that she would be going to. So 
that I drop her and her friends off at the club, and she'd be like, "Oh yeah, just come get us later." I'm like, "All right, what you gonna do?" I, I don't know, man. <laughs> like <the> dip? <laughs> I'm in the dope white tinted window, Mercedes. Smashing. You out. Oh, I'm going around the 91 interchange over the bridge. Oh. I believe it. Oh, hey. Smashing in the whip, looking like the dope man of the century. <laughs> I believe it, man. Smashing. Oh, God, forgive me. I was stealing that woman's car. <laughs> Especially with it's someone else's car. Oh, I shouldn't Bro, say it. I was having oh. too much fun. <laughs> oh god but you know i made sure she was i was back on time she was like oh where you at i was in the area <laughs> y'all ready <laughs> yeah, come on. your lift is here bro <laughs> oh my god that is hilarious bro. man travis what's your what's your drink card uh, el camino man oh yeah el camino man it's been that since a kid and i've never i've never been in one Never touched one. I've only oh, the closest I've ever been to one's like five feet, just like looking at it. But see, El Camino, that is bruh, any one of you them. Know, you know what's so funny about this, folks? I want y'all to understand. We have never talked about this. No, nope. me and Travis, because I'm not. I'm in. So and we're not car guys. Put, I'm not a car guy. I'm not yeah. heavy into cars, trucks, none of that stuff. I just literally just give me any yeah. car to give me the A. Point A to point yeah. B, and I'm good. I ain't got to look at the I, gauge every five minutes. Exactly. Yeah, you two, you two, it legitimately adventures of black nerds. We are sitting, y'all don't, y'all don't even in the cars. We over here nerding out over yeah. cars right now. Oh, man. <laughs> you? Because, you know, I respect first. One thing I love is that I have the, like, I can, I love people's passions. And then when it's something I enjoyed about something, I'll never forget it. Like, mm-hmm. seeing that El Camino, I remember my dad had one. Um, a lot of his friends had them. People in the neighborhood had them. I mean, we worked on the engine when we were growing up for a uh, for El Camino. Um, it, it just it's you know it I, it's not just a nostalgic factor for me, but it's just it gives you so much in that little car. Yeah, right. Like, it's a good you get car. so much with it. Yeah, it's just a solid car. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, dang, you got a truck without having a truck. Exactly. Right. I'm trying. I, what, one reason I don't want a truck though is because the moment you get a truck, all of a sudden people need help with stuff. Oh man, come on! No. I got this new couch, though. Man. <laughs> yeah, hey man, hey B, don't you want a flatbed? <laughs> right. Nah, bro. I sold me. Nah. I sold the yeah, flatbed part. I don't got the flat. Up. <laughs> I'll uh, run you twenty. Can you help me run a couple trips? Okay, right. I'm trying to find what year was like the boxed El Camino. It was a box shaped. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what year that was. That's the one I want. Whatever. Oh, whatever. yeah. I don't like the rounded off ones. I know yeah. what you mean. I like the boxed yeah. ones. I'm trying to find these. They didn't. I want to say they didn't run for that long. They either. didn't. I'm trying. Well, they maybe got like a decade, two decades out of them, if that. Yeah, if that. Oh, was bro, a... what are they killing? What are they killing off right now? The Challengers or the Chargers? Oh, oh they might they're, be killing. Oh, uh, no. no the Camaro. Is it the Camaro? There's something. There's a car they're killing off. Um, they're not gonna make anymore. Really? Uh, I believe it might be the Camaro. Dang, probably. I'm gonna have to look into that man because. Let me see. Chevy Camaro discontinued after 2023. Yo. Oh wow. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Like I get like Camaro. we're trying to move to electric vehicles Camaro. and all that. Let's get it. Let's get an EV Camaro. I mean, nah, you can't do that. That's sacrilegious. You can't. Do that. <laughs> He's like, hear me. Eco friendly. Mm. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Emmy with an E at the end. It don't even got an I. It's just M E. M E. M E. Yeah, no, we can't. It, it, we got to go all the way to electric vehicles. That we can't do no more. It's supposed to be coming out with a hybrid Mustang. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. So I, okay. Well, oh, go ahead. Does it make you like douchey? Like getting a hybrid Mustang? Are you like douchey? I feel like, like <laughs> that's like a double dose like, of dudes. Like, like you, you get, you like get that red. title once you get a, a, a oh, car bro, like that. You're like Lieutenant Douche, if you get the red, all red, cherried out, uh, freaking Mustang, 
EV. Like, EV. <laughs> oh, yes. but, so if it if it's if it's not stock, if you get the step above stock, you're a douche douche. You still douche, but now it's just like you douche Like, hey, like you gotta walk out. Like, as soon as you hop out the car, you gotta have two polos on. Like, like collars both pop. That's... You gotta you gotta have a uh you gotta have a, a freaking like scarf. Like or or uh, uh what are those things called? The damn jackets. You gotta look like you're coming off the show, Archie. Mm. Or <laughs> hopping off the Archie comic. Hey, no, but but legit. Um, I know that's the next step forward. Um, but I wonder, like, what 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 will that do to the to the sports car, the muscle cars, the right. or they could do what they've been doing in trucks is hitting them with a heavier. Uh, Heavier registration and heavier tax. Yeah, probably. They, I mean, yeah, I mean, even even trucks are starting to come out. With, I mean, it's a, it's even trucks are coming out with hybrids now. So, like light hybrid, but like eventually within the next ten years, I imagine like the majority, maybe not the maybe it's too soon, but at some point, the majority of vehicles on the car are going to be EVs. And this that is a good question. Like, what the hell happens to to your I'm just gonna get in and go fast and be loud and sound like a complete badass. Like, what, what, yeah. where do those cars go? You know what? Cars. Is that why '99 Honda Civic still costs like two grand for no reason? Yes, bro. Just, can, you can put me. anything on them. You yeah. can put anything. They selling these cars like they're not 20 plus years old, and people right. still buy them. But it, like, I, I know it, a guy at work right now working on two of them. See what get, oh. get it paint. He get it slammed, paint, break a bumper, and put another bumper. I'm like, you know how hard it is for me to find a bumper for my car? You, They just are out and about. So, oh, so yeah, cheap. they got a yard. It's a yard full of these parts. Just just parts. Yeah, just walk out there. Like, how many yeah. times your catalytic converter going to get stolen and you going to keep putting another one? <laughs> just get on another there? one. Like, how yeah, many times? I heard they were stealing those because of the, what? I forgot there was a metal in it. I yeah, the uh, or something. I think it's copper or. I think I, I think it might be platinum. Yeah, I think it's, it's platinum. It's something yeah. in there. But it's I, an expensive metal. Man, I was, in the comments. I was at work and thirty minutes into the shift. Or no, it was let's just give it a time frame. An hour into the shift, somebody's catalytic converter got stolen. Broad daylight, Sam on the job. On the job. I said, How? Where was your that at? Is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's bananas, uh, but yeah. so how, hey, how do you feel know. about Tesla? Oh yeah, uh, I'm in, I'm in a love hate relationship with Tesla. Like, preach on it. I love the tech. I love what they're doing. I love that they're so think it's so futuristic. Them things cost too damn much, man. Like, and they're everywhere. Man, they you are know what? Becoming, especially like I live in LA now. You you can't drive nowhere without seeing a, a Tesla. It's you like, know come what? On, man. I seen a. Okay, my first time ever seeing a Tesla, I fanboyed out. It was my first mm-hmm. bo- time ever seeing it. The door handles oh, popped out. You. Yeah, he was with yeah. me. I was, I was with you. <laughs> he was like, I you been somewhere. I was <laughs> like, yo, is that the handle? I something. Did bro, the- I was with you now. I was like, I like you been somewhere. Like, I'm like, yo, did you just <laughs> see the handle on that? The handle just popped out and said, open me. I'm sitting there trying to act like it's not cool. And he over here fanboying hard. Man, I'm fan. I was fanboying because Jay Money, Jay Money. At, at that what? time, because you got to think about it, where where I stay at, we don't see those. You yeah. don't see them because there's no use for them, because people commute everywhere they go. Right. So, uh, you know, to limit yourself to how far you can go, putting yourself in the hole. Well, mm-hmm. and um, there's no charging stations your way. Yeah, there and there's no, there's like one out here. And you gotta go to a mall to charge it, so I'm Dollar. not sure how long you gotta sit and charge it for, but you gotta be at a mall, get your thing charged. But anyway, I don't see them. I only read and see concept and pictures and Instagram posts on these cars. So when I seen it, and I seen it had all the 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 doohickeys in there and the really iPad, good. and I was, was like, wild. no, no, they did not. The, the handle just the handle is what threw me off. It, he was like, oh yeah, just hold on. And he did it, and then the, and the and, oh, bruh. You know, I think my conspiracy theory is that Tesla killed off the killed off the spinning rim with that. We all here getting excited about spinning rims, mm. and they handle just gonna pop out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Hey, butterfly handles? <laughs> hey, no. You know what? You know what's my one fear with uh with the Tesla is is for as many as I see, one, there's not that many dealerships, and then you have to go to Tesla to get them worked on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're expensive. That's the only I'm gonna be real. I want one. Mm-hmm. I legit Yet, want it one. makes sense to get one. Yeah. Um, because I can a real talk, I already discussed it with the wife. I was like, I'll go park it at Tyler Mall for how many hours until they close after work and be at the mall for four hours walking laps, losing weight, <laughs> exercising. <laughs> but yeah. uh look, but I and leave it there to charge. Like yeah. no, nah, listen, you can get I, I know they, a bunch of charging places. And I think you can buy one for your home. Like you can get yeah, one f- for your home. Ass house, man. My house would die. Man, what I'm did you hook up to our fire. power grid? Man, but you're right though. Man, a forest fire. Like, <laughs> nah, it, you hey, know what? Houses come built with uh um are starting to be built with like charging stations. Yeah, mm-hmm. because of solar panels and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, that's why it's the future. Like you're starting to see a lot more of the, a lot more of these charging stations pop up. You know, yeah. it's slow, but. I mean, I'm sure, like, you know, way back when, gas cars, you know, you had to drive miles to get some gas, probably. Now they're everywhere. And at some you point, know, you know it's going to be charging stations. There was a video I watched on YouTube of a girl who lived, like, in, you know, they, they she was doing, she did, like, a daily vlog, and she did a vlog where she went and bought a Tesla. But where she lived was, like, the boonies, like, the this just dirt roads. So you mm. bought a Tesla to drive down the dirt road. That's backwards. Like, you don't do that. Like, what, yeah. what you going to do? Well, she had it for a week and she had to get rid of it because she obviously uh, didn't work out. So I started right. looking into it even more. And I'm, I'm thinking these is 100000 at minimum $75,000. The, the, the basic one, the one without the pop-out handles, without the pa- iPad, all Under of the that. Fixes. Man, right. $30,000. And I, I was like, you know what? That don't sound that bad. Right. <laughs> I tried to justify it to myself, my wife, friends, family, everybody. I'm getting a Tesla. $30,000. I don't need pop-out handles. I use regular handles now. I just let me use my regular handles as long as I get <laughs> the Tesla experience. I'm getting a Tesla. <laughs> right. <laughs> my, but like, okay, speaking, rolling back to marketing. Because I didn't realize we spent dang near 30 minutes talking about cars. But well, welcome to the Black Nerds. Welcome to Adventures <laughs> of the Black Nerds, folks, for those who are new. But no, look at Tesla's marketing power. Mm-hmm. One, they remember those viral videos of people sleep in the car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. How is it that have you seen a Tesla uh, dealership? Nope. No. Travis? Not. Nope. But everybody got cars. Everybody like pigeons, but you, I ain't never seen a baby pigeon. But <laughs> the pigeons everywhere. No, I don't even I, think you can Google a baby pigeon. I'm gonna <laughs> Google it. I'm Google. They just, Google. Come, they just no, come up there and adults. Bam, we can hear. Be, right, that bro. has to be pure marketing, bro. Because yeah. I've never seen a Tesla dealership. Now yeah. I don't know if that means I live in the boons, but I mean I, I'm not that I, far I, from LA. I've honestly, only, I've only ever seen one in LA and like Beverly Hills too. And I'm not, I don't even like shopping in Beverly Hills. I'm, I'm just driving around and I seen yeah. one. I was like, oh shoot, like everybody in SoCal comes here to get their yeah. Tesla. So, so, Thank you. Because the only thing that makes, but no, their, their marketing power, really Elon Musk himself is just like, yes, he's a great businessman, but that dude knows some marketing. When you look at, he, he says outlandish things sometimes, like, like kind of like someone else we know, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. But, uh, you know, whenever when the conversation around Tesla or something is starting to come down, he'll share one of his opinions. Mm-hmm. Bam. We are, we are talking about Elon Musk. And then we find out after we're talking about Elon Musk, we're finding out that Tesla's doing something or, or SpaceX is doing something or he's launching a new business. But I feel like he always comes out, says whatever. Boom. It's in the news. Now, here's what I really wanted y'all to pay attention to, which is a is a I mean, it's. It's now really we, we see a lot of that. Is that marketing one hundred and one right there? Is I like step number one marketing because you see that in hip hop. You see that mm-hmm. in oh well, I can't really say gaming, but I, let's use hip hop. You see you see that a lot in hip hop, right? When <laughs> somebody's beefing, then they come out with a song with the. Now nah, I got an album. Good. Oh, I'm right. a I'm a dis. For example, Machine Gun MGK. Oh yeah. 
Eminem diss me, I'ma diss him back. But hey, buy my album. My album drops next Friday. But listen to this song. But my album is out Friday. I'ma go buy the album on Friday. Right. <laughs> That's why. It's why it's interesting. It's like a, it's like a great merge of of like PR, public relations, and marketing because they're coming together to get the same goal done. But um, so an example, I'm doing the same with uh, someone's brand that I'm managing right now. And he's very much about cars, you know, does a lot of car reviews. This is how I have the connection through my job with more cars and stuff. Um, but he's like, yo, but I also want to like do lifestyle stuff. And I'm like, yes, yeah, that's fine. But like your audience right now wants cars. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to sit here and we're just going to talk about cars and cars and cars. And then one day your audience is going to be so tuned in. They're, they're not going to care what you talk about. Now you're gonna. Now we're gonna pivot. Now we're gonna talk about some more lifestyle stuff. Man, and I'm I'm thinking, like, bro. Even when I even <laughs> even sitting talking about like esports and stuff like that, right? When I see these guys doing that, and they've getting to that point where they've tr- transcended what they started on, it be- it's so shocking to me that like like man, I, I remember when all he did was. Call of Duty commentary. Now he buying ten thousand dollars shoes and and ten thousand dollars boxes of fruit snacks right, it's crazy. and all of these just outrageous things. Like what happened to the Call of Duty? Like <laughs> what's going on? But yeah, I understand cause... it. Like you get to that point and it's just you're beyond that now. Right. You have an audience, and not just that. It's that you get to the point where where your audit where you outgrown your own audience. Right. Like you can't pull in no more people that are interested in streams or people that are interested in cars Mm -hmm. you 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 have all of them right but you can't just be stagnant like you got to continue growing otherwise that money is going to dry up so it's like boom what's the next thing that i talk about what else am i am i passionate about is it shoes like you just mentioned yeah um is it lifestyle stuff you have to got to pivot you know pivot (laughs) (laughs) friends folks friends but um but (laughs) But look, okay, so we're getting into the last 10 minutes. It's crazy. I didn't, this legit went fast. But I want to hit, so we hit Facebook. I want to go through all the major social media and like your pro tips for people wanting to get their business accounts or their creator content, basically business accounts, right. live and active. So let's run into Instagram. What, sure. what are your tips for people trying to get recognized on Instagram? Um. This is really going to be a theme for all of them. So I'll just say that, but it's really important with Instagram too, is consistency. So consistent, good content is what I'll say. However often you can provide good content, do it. So if that's three times a week, it really shouldn't be any less than at least three to four times a week. But if that's three to four times a week, that's your, that's your number. If it's three to four times a day, that's your number. But like, don't post eight posts, next week or eight posts in three days and then one post every other day after that it's like unless if you're specifically running a campaign designed for that and you kind of let your audience know like hey about to get wild like we gonna be in here but after this you know we going back to what we do Mm, um facebook i kind of said it earlier pay to play space um you have to be willing to put ad money behind it but also with Facebook still reigning supreme as the number one social network, you got to do your best to get your friends and family tied into your business. And then you start work internally, then work externally. That's kind of marketing in general, but a lot with Facebook. Uh, next big one be like Twitter. Twitter is where, honestly, just go ham. Be in there tweeting. <laughs> However often you could tweet, retweet, like stuff, whatever. Tweet away. Um I would say those are the big three. Um, LinkedIn is up and coming, but obviously that's more business focused and you should keep that business focused. Snapchat is still an infant in the social media world. Nobody really knows what to do with Snapchat. People be thinking I'm tripping when I say that. Nobody knows. No, Snapchat doesn't you know, know Nobody Snapchat knows what to do. Be. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I personally think they should just link up with like Tinder and Grindr and just Who make owns Snapchat. Hey, I feel like I just gave out a Snapchat. billion dollar idea. It's no then link up become no because they, they would merge very well together like dating sites and and uh, but see I, for <laughs> okay right. I don't have a Snapchat but oh, I do shit. follow I want it. my money <laughs> nobody gonna do that hey you no, better, you better mail that. you better mail be it dope. to yourself <laughs> that would be real dope but um 
Okay, so I, I thought somebody owned Snapchat. I didn't know it was. Oh no, uh, their business is called Snap Inc. Okay, it's, so it's, it's Snapchat. Okay, so yeah. there is Facebook no like. Facebook tried to come in and buy them, and Snapchat said no. And Facebook was like, okay, word. And then they that's when Instagram Story Mode was was born. Oh, uh... by the way, let me go back to Instagram. So story stories are growing. What it, what was the number? I believe they get fifteen times more engagement than your normal timeline stuff. So are you serious? Yeah, that makes sense. stories are getting stupid engagement right now. So now is the time for businesses to be on post I'm, stories. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why that makes sense for me. Cause I watch stories, and then yeah. when I see something that entertains me, and it'd be like, oh, check out my page or something like that. I go to the page next, and then right. stroll, and that's exactly how I do it. I'm starting right. to do that on Facebook now. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I know we're running out of time, so I just want to give like the no, last. Keep going. I just wanted yeah. to put that marker out there. So if you got some info, drop the gems, bro. Yeah, Please, absolutely. Just and you, your family. So you know this. I'm, I'm charged people for this, but <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Your ears, folks. No, the last <laughs> yeah. ten minutes. Get <laughs> some sponsors, nah, uh, right? <laughs> But uh, I think the big thing that people have to realize when it comes to businesses and your pages is that, like I said earlier, it is a brand. Treat it like a business. Um, you wouldn't just post, no business posts crazy. You think the, your favorite page that you're posting is just out here posting? No. Whatever they're posting, they are thinking about it strategically. Mm. They're looking at the numbers. Um, they're working out a content calendar. They're trying to figure out how do we get people to like, comment, share and then ultimately go to the website to purchase or whatever the next step may be. Um, so people really have to start treating their business, their 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 per, their pages like a business. Okay. It is a business, so, so treat it that way. I got a question about that like, comment, share. Is it in that order or is... No, I just threw that out there. It, de it depends on what your goals are. So some things that I may post, I want pe I'm hoping people click uh, other things I'm hoping people comment on and likes likes is just a general metric like if nobody comments at least I got like 35 likes and maybe maybe my um, my call to action you know the um, uh, comment here or click this those things call to actions uh, maybe so, that was bad and so, I have to adjust that so those do work when people be like call hey comment in my section about such and such because for the oh, longest yeah. even in youtube videos or even on when you're when sometimes when i'm streaming and i'm talking to myself because it'd be like four people in there watching i'll be like hey what do you guys feel about this <laughs> and uh you know and maybe it's just the time of the day or whatever because i've seen i've seen b do it in his stream but it's more you know people will, will respond to whatever he said but like mm -hmm. it's been a few times recently where i've said that and ain't nobody really said nothing. So I'm like, all right, well, at least you guys are here watching. Mm -hmm. This is just, this is Twitch, by the way, that we're talking about. So yeah, um, that's why I was wondering, like, is there a, like a, a scientific method to that? Like, do you want people to share it more? Or do you want people to like it more? Or do you want people to comment? Like, which one is the one that, if you had to do one, what do you want people to do? Well, so it, it really, like I said, it, it depends. So like for you, for you and what you're doing, I would say it's more of a, a, a I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen your stream, so I don't know exactly how you're doing, but I would say it's the communications thing, right? So if you, I think, I would think if you started off, you know, you're gaming, you're doing your thing, you kind of take notice of people watching, you're like, oh, hey, um, thanks for watching, guys. I got a question coming to you in a couple minutes. Like, that, like, gets them like, oh, he's going to ask. I wonder what he's going to ask. Okay. Then a couple Pretty seconds good. later, you fire off the question, right? Look, um, y'all got notes. I, I hope y'all <laughs> listen to notes. And for those, yeah, games, I got my notepad, bro. Look, y'all think I'm playing. That's I, absolutely. Like, that's actually some gems. Mm -hmm. Like, giving some, giving some, uh, some tease. At any because, time, man. You guys are more than look, welcome. Shoot me fire questions anytime. Oh, yeah, because don't worry, because once we end this, uh, we're going to be talking. <laughs> but, um, but no, I've always, um, with, when, it come, when it came to Twitch, and when it came to anything dealing with like content creating, I um, at least in the beginning, I was always pursuing real fans, mm -hmm. like yes. legit community members. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people become moderators. I've had people and shout out to my mods, man. I'm so sorry I, I stopped t streaming on Twitch. I, I got scared. I, I <laughs> got scared of streaming streaming on Twitch 
because I'm not constantly looking at my screen and all it takes is a couple of people running there going haywire mm-hmm. and then get a report and then all of a sudden you're down for 30 days. Yeah. Like I a guy I watch, I'm not gonna put his name out there, but he uh, he got uh banned because somebody reported his his uh stream, but they took the report versus actually rev- uh reviewing his stream and they just banned him because he was getting enough of them. Yeah. And it just it's it's scary that so many other people have your money maker in their hands. Right. You know, I mean, but that's the market. That's kind of with anything if you really think about it. it but is. it's just so instant. Like yeah. usually it takes one to get somebody closed down. Mm-hmm. But not on the internet. All I gotta do is hit that report button enough times and get enough people held to go to change.org and start a petition. <laughs> like <laughs> and something that happened. Yeah, and you're done. Like I mean you see it, people getting banned on Xbox Live and play like it's it's yeah. real. Um, so I got nervous and I, I just backed out and I feel a little more free on uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. That's what I that's where I stream at. You know, I just make it clear like we I talking think crap. A lot of things with Twitch too is because they give you that option to like not only have moderators in your chat, but to be able to go and set these keywords and do these specific things. But what a lot of people, people do all that. Yeah, but people are getting real smart with it. Like they'll force it in a way like they'll put it like they'll put like the first you know and then an at sign and at and then something else and then if you say it fast enough it's the word ah he said it ban him yeah you know report yep. and then they report That's you crazy. yeah it, it's it, real it's, hey, oh it's the wild west bro because it's real scary i'm gonna tell it's, you it's they, yeah, they have this thing called uh twitch fails which is a <laughs> a legit thing which it's people making mistakes on twitch like while they're streaming and people not only do they gain a, a, a they gain a fan base from it i won't say they won't get they won't gain some any type of monetization cuz it's other people's content but they gain mm. a following off of this because going of around. going around and clipping this person's stream or clipping this youtube video and showing this part where this person for example one girl thought she was done streaming thought she clicked the not streaming anymore but she still was streaming or people wow. falling asleep on stream, or it's just these weird things. And and trolls are ruling the world. The world of the That's internet, true trolls have taken over. There's no hiding That's from fact, it. man. So yeah. and you know what that brings me to my I guess my last point that I that I would want to make. And when it comes to socials, like the trolls, man. At some point, when when you're hopefully you grow to where you have a ton of trolls, but you cannot. You know that that's the goal, right? Everybody's trolling your stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. but you cannot come. You cannot respond nope. to every single yeah. troll. I've, Some I've comments you just gotta let them comments go or delete them. I have no you know, when the, the person's uh, Instagram that I'm managing something pops up there that doesn't fit the brand. I'm like, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get this one on out of here. Somebody's selling whatever, or yeah, because you got the option to clean it up. Why exactly. not? It's no sen- It makes no sense to go in there and respond because now you just now you just feed the troll. No, and that's what they want. Think about this. I was streaming right one night, and I got a couple dudes to hop in. And first time streaming on PC, they're watching me. They're giving me tips, and I'm like, "Oh man, look, I feel good." One dude was like, "Hey man, uh, <laughs> barrel roll." No, 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 no. no. <laughs> listen, listen. You go, you gonna laugh. You gonna laugh. He was like, he was like, "Hey man, um, I noticed that on your stream, you got this, this. Hit all F four, and it'll fix it." <laughs> oh. Who hits all L four? Oh. I hit all L four, and the dude gave me a follow and was like, "Peace." That's all he said was peace. He hit follow, oh. peace, and then he left. I was like, "I'm just gonna laugh. I'm not gonna even be mad. I'm not gonna even say nothing because I could have been like, man, yeah. you know, right. man." I hit the all F four. Didn't know what it was. I had to Google it. After everything, I googled it, and it was a meme. It's a whole meme. Yes, all there's F- a whole world in all F four. Alt plus F four equals world peace, or some something like. That. It's just, <laughs> I seen them all, man. It was just, it was just crazy. But you, you're right. You just, if you, okay. it's so many people I watch. If you just let them be, or don't like tolerate it at all, where I wouldn't even ban it. I would just not say nothing. I just won't say. Don't say nothing. nothing at all. Because it makes, I mean, it, and it takes time out of your day and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. Like, I've seen, why? I've seen trolls know? change a man's name. Like, how you change yeah. my name? 
Like, <laughs> oh, bro, do you remember what happened to me on uh, on the Black uh, Black Death, the PC game? Uh uh-uh. uh I'm gonna try to make a long story short as hell. So, I'm on in this server for this game, and it was I think it was during the beta time or the yeah during the open beta, and I'm playing the Black uh, the Black Death. I got to create. I created my character. I got a community. We having fun. I got a castle built. I take like the servers got wiped because of course it's a beta. So we come back and I go under my same name, but somebody used my name first, and they went around and was doing evil. They was robbing people, killing people, stealing all their stuff. So people were legit like running from me, and I was I had to change servers. Mm-hmm. I had to run away from the server. Oh, yeah, people. I do remember that. I do Bro, remember I was, that. So incredible. I, I was like deep into that. And it just all it took was somebody to put an I instead of a, what, what is it, an I and an L and you change, and it makes it look the same and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god. But something um, something I want to, oh do you have, do you do personal, um, do you handle branding outside of your comp- out of the company you work for? Like, do you do it personally? Yeah, uh, that's something I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to launch and, uh, you know, plug, plug real quick, DominiqueJF.com, still working on it, still, still thing, but I'm working on that. That'll be my website. Um, Dom, uh, I got to look at my phone, get my Instagram. That's how, that's how new. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. We want, you please. Yeah. Please. We want you know, folks, hey, Dom, we call, oh, we call these shameless yeah. plugs. Just go ahead, Absolutely. run them through. Dominic JF will be my be my branding Instagram, um, and as we're having this conversation, I, obviously, like I want to continue to to work on people's brands and all that, but I do enjoy educating, especially people of color. There's not enough people of color in this industry, so um, if I can provide, I was kidding about the whole this is free knowledge because it should be free knowledge, and and it's not as hard as people think. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of study, but. It's not that hard. So yeah, feel free to reach out. You've got questions. I'm I'm happy to answer to the best of my knowledge or lead someone, help lead someone to a resource. Okay. There we go. Okay. Folks, I'm Baron J67. I'm T Jones. And just shout- all those links will be in the description below. Yes. And shout out to all the people who work with us. Nerds Noir, the gear is up. You can go shop and check that out. Um we have Tone Deaf Network. Much love to the family. We got to meet up and do like a big podcast party type thing. That would actually be really dope. Um, hey. Shout out to the fam out that way, blasting us across the universe. And just shout out to you guys who are listeners, whether it's on Spreaker, watching us on YouTube, checking us out on Apple Music, uh, Spotify, Spotify. All the, all, anywhere you guys are listening to us or watching us, man, much love and thank you. And shout out to Dominique, man, fam. Thank, thank you, so you for much coming for on, man. Out. Appreciate you. Thanks for knowledge. having me, guys. And what's your social media? One more time, your uh, Instagram. Instagram is Dominique JF. Uh, Twitter is Dominique JF underscore. There we go, folks. Much love and peace. Peace.